Welcome into another episode of Locked On Phillies, and today is a bit of a sad episode. Reese Hoskins has officially signed elsewhere. He's going to be a member of the Milwaukee Brewers. I want to take some time to talk about what Reese Hoskins meant to the Philadelphia Phillies organization during his time here. Also, the Phillies made a move. They signed Colby Aller. I'll tell you who he is and what you need to know about him and where do they look to improve next after this move. A lot of stuff on today's episode of Locked On Phillies. You are Locked On Phillies, your daily Philadelphia Phillies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, this is Locked On Phillies. I'm Connor Thomas, your host. Thank you so much for checking us out. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. If you're consuming us in podcast form today, please make sure you rate and review wherever you get your podcasts. If you're watching on YouTube and haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. It'll get you new notifications every time an episode is posted. And today's episode is brought to you by Fandle. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. When you place a $5 bet, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And yes, Reese Hoskins has officially signed with another team. Reese Hoskins signed a two-year deal with the Milwaukee Brewers worth $34 million as of yesterday. So Reese Hoskins goes to Milwaukee. Milwaukee is getting a great one. Before we revel in the time that Reese Hoskins spent with the Phillies organization, you might look at that and say two years, $34 million, that's what, $17 million a year. That's not pricey. Why didn't the Phillies want to pay that? And frankly, Bryce Harper is, and this is going to be ironic as we get to more of like Reese Hoskins' legacy with this organization, but you could say that Reese Hoskins is a big reason why Bryce Harper is here in Philadelphia. He Bryce, the Bryce, <laughs> combine their names there. Bryce Harper is a big reason why Reese Hoskins is not here in the city of Philadelphia anymore. Now, you're not going to sign someone to a $17 million year contract to be on the bench. You're just not. So it doesn't make sense for Reese Hoskins to be here unless he was playing in the field. And the only position he can really play is first base. The outfield experiments that the Phillies have tried with Reese Hoskins in the past never really seem to work, and your outfield's pretty settled. So yeah, it's either Bryce Harper playing first base or Reese Hoskins playing first base, and Harper can't really play anywhere else due to his Tommy John, and the outfield's kind of locked down, and Schwarber DHs. There was just no spot for Reese Hoskins on this team. It's unfortunate. It's very similar to the Gene Segura situation when Trey Turner came in last year, and it's just the casualties of improving the roster. But Reese Hoskins was just – he was so amazing as a member of the Philadelphia Phillies organization. He came into this organization at a time where they were in that dead zone of not making the playoffs and not having any type of success at the major league level and not having a great farm system. And it was just what in the world is this team ever going to do to reach relevancy again? And a lot of people point to Bryce Harper as the reason the Phillies have once again reached relevancy and more than relevancy. They've been on an amazing run. Let's be realistic about this. Remember the narrative about when Bryce Harper came here, when he decided to sign here? Yeah, he got paid like crazy. So did Manny Machado. So there was money out there from other teams. Bryce Harper wanted to be in a city that he loved, a city he could build a family in that was passionate, that he felt like wanted him. But part of the narrative at that time was also Reese Hoskins, Bryce Harper. These guys are close friends. Their families know each other. Reese Hoskins was a drawing point for Bryce Harper to be here in Philadelphia. If he's not here, who knows if Bryce Harper's here? Who knows if that leads to Jay Trumito re-signing? That leads to Zach Wheeler coming here? That leads to all these guys, Schwarber, Castellanos, Trey Turner, everybody. The ethos of it very well could have been Reese Hoskins talks Bryce Harper into playing in the city of Philadelphia, or at least is a reason he's here. So while we look at Harper as the guy – Reese Hoskins was kind of the guy before the guy. And he also had moments while Harper was here. It was not just, 
oh, this is a feel-good story because Reese Hoskins was nice to a guy one time, and that guy's a good baseball player. No, Reese in his own right was outstanding for the Philadelphia Phillies. A lot of people who are negative on Reese Hoskins are going to always look at his defense. They're going to say, the guy couldn't field anything at first base. He was useless there at first base. He was a defensive liability. <laughs> and guess what, folks? They're all kind of right. Like, he was not good at, at defense. He was not a good defensive first baseman. Kyle Schwarber is not a good defensive outfielder. He got the benefit of DHing. You see what he means with his bat. And Reese Hoskins had some huge at-bats for this team. None bigger than what you looked at back in 2022 in the NLDS, in the Philadelphia Phillies' first home playoff game in a decade, and facing Spencer Strider. You were looking at a tied 1-1 series, and Reese Hoskins busted that game wide open and then spiked his bat to the center of the earth's crust. It was an outstanding moment, one of my favorite moments. Honestly, if Bedlam at the Bank doesn't happen later on in that postseason run with Bryce Harper hitting the home run to send you to the World Series, that Reese Hoskins home run is probably the biggest one of – my lifetime, Matt Stairs is in the conversation as well. Matt Stairs might beat him, but what that signified, the moment it created, and it's still one of the loudest times I've ever heard Citizens Back Park. It may have been the loudest. Like I remember it like it was yesterday, sitting up in the press box and watching that ball soar. It was nuked. Like That moment itself was the culmination of the Reese Hoskins experience because he slugged through a lot of bad years. And he never caused an issue in the clubhouse. He was always a great leader and teammate. He was a great guy in the community. Uh, his wife, Jamie, was awesome. They were buying beers for people out in left field. Like the whole section, not just individual people. The Hoskins family was amazing to have in the city. It, I don't care that he couldn't field a baseball. Like I, I legitimately don't care that he couldn't field a baseball. Reese Hoskins' legacy in the city is going to be made by that home run off Spencer Strider the type of teammate and type of man he was and what he did for the community. And the fact that he was in that transition from the doldrums, the bad years, the we're never going to compete for anything to the we're going on a magical World Series appearance run and NL pennant winning run. And it's also, it's such a shame that his career ended with the Phillies the way it did with the torn ACL in spring training last year, because who knows how different this team would have looked if indeed Reese Hoskins had ended up playing first base the whole year. Like, who knows what happens with that? Who knows how it plays differently if you have him available? Are the Phillies going back to the World Series? I mean, there's an argument to be made that they were maybe a postseason performer away, and Reese Hoskins proved in 2022 that he's a postseason performer. So, I don't know. He was a streaky hitter, a very high ceiling sometimes a low floor, but more importantly than all that, he was a guy that deserved all of the love he got in Philadelphia because he was just, it's rare that you see a player get the opportunity to win in a city. And I, I know they didn't win at all, but go on a run and win in a city after endearing himself to the fan base as part of a losing team and being such a great guy in the community. I can't say enough good things about Reese Hoskins. Uh, I've had the chance to talk to him multiple times and before I did this, I had a chance to run into him multiple times around the city. I mean, the dude, there was like, he'd just be at a bar and people would just be talking to him like it's normal. I would be just going about my errands. And I there was a time where I saw him. He was at the teller next to me at the bank, not Citizens Bank Park. No, he was at the teller next to me at a literal bank. He was just an accessible everyman type of guy. And it was amazing to see what he became in this city. I'm glad he got the chance to make that 2022 run. And honestly, my heart breaks that he couldn't do it in 2023. But if you're watching Reese Hoskins leave this organization with anything but gratitude in your heart for that man, I don't think you're a true Phillies fan. I think that should be the only feeling that anyone has towards Reese Hoskins, the rest of his family, and his time as a member of the Philadelphia Phillies. Just a shame that he didn't get to realize the ultimate goal, but Milwaukee is getting a great baseball player and an even better person. And for those wondering, when you could see Reese Hoskins again, 
Milwaukee comes to town for a series starting on June 3rd in Philadelphia. Reese Hoskins will make his return to Citizens Bank Park then. It'll be an emotional day for sure. And I can't wait to see the video tribute and everything on that day. But, uh, yes, Reese Hoskins officially no longer a member of the Philadelphia Phillies. We kind of knew this was coming uh, with everything going on as far as the positions that were being filled and what the Phillies were talking about doing. But uh, it's now official. The Brewers signed him to two years, $34 million. And there you have it. Reese Hoskins' time as a Philadelphia Philly, at least for now, is done. Maybe he'll come back later on in his career. Coming up next, though, the Phillies not only lost somebody yesterday in Reese Hoskins, but they gained somebody else. They finally made a move. It's a minor move, but who is Colby Allard? Allard? i got to learn how to say his name right. I believe it's Allard like Mallard. But who is he? And what does he bring? And why did the Phillies sign him? I'll tell you all about Colby Allard next as we continue today's episode of Locked On Phillies. First of all, I want to tell you about my friends over at FanDuel. The NFL regular season's over. The playoffs are here, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app's super easy to use, and there are so many different ways to bet. You can do live same-game parlays. You can find bets in the new Explore tab that help you find the best bets possible. You can make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, and you can find more popular parlays that other users have made. It's a great, great feature. There's a lot of great stuff, and there's plenty more, too. Futures, money line, over-unders, all that typical stuff. A regular spread, you can make all the same old bets, too. FanDuel's such an easy interface. It's such a great app. Uh, they're just really awesome. Plus, I mean, 150 bucks for any $5 bet, win or lose. Who's not going to take advantage of that? So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right. Colby Allard has officially been signed by the Philadelphia Phillies. Now, who is Colby Allard? Colby Allard is a left-handed pitcher most recently with the Atlanta Braves in 2023. But before that, he spent four years in Texas, and then he was with Atlanta back in 2018. So he's one of those guys that starts with Atlanta, goes to Texas, has a good run, leaves, goes to Atlanta. And he's worked largely out of the bullpen in his career. He's had six years at the major league level, so he does have some major league experience. He's only 26 years of age, and he's a former first-round pick. He was number 14 overall in the 2015 draft. So high pedigree guy, experienced, 26 years of age. This is a great signing for the Philadelphia Phillies, right? Uh, okay, well, hold your horses a little bit. Let's look at some of the numbers. So Colby Allard has only pitched over 46 innings once in his major league career. He's worked largely out of the bullpen. His ERAs, 2018. 12.38 ERA, small sample size. 2019, 496 ERA. Okay, better, better. 2020, 775 ERA. 2021, 541. 2022, 729. 2023, 6.57. He's never had an ERA below 4.96. That's only a hair under a 5 ERA. And as a reliever, that's not exactly what you're looking for. He doesn't give up a lot of home runs. Really, ah, He has lately, though, 29 in 2021, uh, 9 in 21 innings pitched in 2022. And then he gave up uh, 2 last year in 12 and a third innings pitched. He's had some injuries, which is why you'll hear some of these inning uh, totals lower. So that's the thought, right? A little bit injured, hasn't really been able to figure it out at the major league level. A lefty with a high pedigree being a former first-round pick, especially in the Atlanta Braves organization. Is this a guy that the Phillies can get more out of? So that's the thought, right? It's a low-risk, high-reward deal. Also, the contract signed it as split pay, which what split pay means, and there's a better term for it, sure. I'm sure that's just what I call it, split pay. It means at the major league level, he's going to get paid something. And then there's also something in the deal where if he plays at the minor league level, he'll get paid differently. So that is normally an indication that this is a player who's going to spend time at both levels. 
He also has one more option, one more minor league option. So if the Phillies put him on the 26-man roster to start the year and he goes to the bullpen, they can send him down once over the course of the season without penalty. So we talked previously about optionality. That's in addition to optionality. So that's a good thing, right? So it's, again, low risk, high reward. But you might say there are a lot of low risk, high reward guys out there in free agency that have even a better track record than Colby Allard. Why him? Here's why the Philadelphia Phillies did it. And it's exactly what we talked about as far as what their strategy is going to be. Starting, pitching, depth. And guys on two-way, not two-way, because two-way is a basketball term that's in the NBA, but basically two-way contracts. Guys, they're going to spend time in the minors and the majors, which I imagine Colby Allard is going to do if he even makes it to the majors, which is a question mark. He's, again, a low-risk, high-reward type guy. But we talked about how many starters you need and who can fulfill that role. Well, in 2021 with the Texas Rangers, Colby Allard started 17 games. Now, he was 3-12 and record-wise, but the Rangers were not good that year. That was a terrible season for them. He threw 124 and two-thirds innings, and he also had a 5-4-1 ERA, the second lowest mark of his career. Now, if you need a guy to go out there and make a spot start or two, a 5-4-1 ERA is not terrible. You could do worse, and he has starting experience. Over the course of his career, he started a total of 38 games in six years. So he has starting experience at the major league level. That's a good thing. That's the experience that the Philadelphia Phillies want. The fact that he could be a swing starter. That he's comfortable in the bullpen, comfortable in the starting role, versatility. You can use him any way you want. He is a safety valve for injuries. That is the only reason that he's here. And that is why. Uh, this move fits exactly with the narrative that I've been preaching to you guys. They're looking for guys that can be bullpen or swing starters. They're looking for guys that can play at the major league level and minor league level because they have minor league options left. Colby Allard fits into that perfectly. Uh, a little bit more on him just so you know why his ERA is where it is. He's actually really good in walk rate, and he's been solid lately in his career in strikeout rate. So, he doesn't walk a lot of guys. He does have a little bit of strikeout stuff, but he doesn't throw hard. He's more of a crafty lefty. He'll sit around like 91, 92, um, cutter, off-speed, change-up. Like, nothing crazy special about this guy. So you're not going to see him come in and light up the uh, the radar gun. Uh, you're not going to see anything like that. He just he gives up good contact. He's kind of a workaround pitcher. He doesn't have great strikeout stuff, but because he doesn't walk a lot of guys, his ratios look good, but – He's more of a control, spot up, find a way to get guys out type of guy and a contact type of pitcher, which is an ideal at Citizens Bank Park. And it is an ideal in this era of baseball, but that's the type of pitcher he is. If you don't throw hard, you kind of have to become one of those type of pitchers. So that's what you're looking at. A guy that doesn't really throw that hard, crafty lefty, might find a way to get some guys out of the major league level and could, if there's an injury or multiple injuries, find himself as a spot starter, as an emergency starter for the Philadelphia Phillies in the 2024 season. So that is your introduction to one Colby Allard, and I believe that's a solid signing for the Philadelphia Phillies for what he's going to be. They're not going to make splash signings. So the question that you have to ask is not talent level of the player. It is experience of the player. And is there experience in a role that makes sense for potentially helping this team? Colby Allard. 38 starts at the major league level, has played for six years at the major league level, former first-round selection. He's a guy that has the experience that the Phillies want and the experience in the right role, being that he started and pitched out of the bullpen. We'll worry about the ERA when we actually see him at the major league level, which ideally would probably be never. It wouldn't make the major league roster and you'd have your better pitchers healthy. But Health is not a guarantee in baseball, and that's not anything against Colby Allard. It's just if everyone was healthy, you wouldn't need any type of depth, and there would be guys just that would never make a team. It doesn't mean they're bad baseball players. It's just uh, he's a depth piece, a safety valve, and we'll see if the Phillies have to use him at any point coming up this season. But with that signing done, with their first move since re-signing Aaron Nola, what's next for the Philadelphia Phillies? I'll tell you my thoughts as we wrap up today's episode. 
All right, so you got the swing starter, minor league option, bullpen guy, fills a lot of roles, a versatile left-handed pitcher. Do I see Colby Allard making the 26-man roster? Well, that's a question I'll dive deeper into next time I do one of those projections. I guess we'll do one coming up, either later this week or next week, since we've seen a move from the Philadelphia Phillies, and we know that Reese Hoskins is not by any chance resigning or anything like that, so I might have to update the 26-man roster sometime in the next couple weeks before spring training but the point is they made this move what does it show you about where they are looking to improve next i don't think the outfield market is settled as much as they'd like it to be but the fact that they've made a move to a reliever shows that they do think that that is settling down so i would imagine the next move by the philadelphia phillies is another reliever another guy with minor league optionality and another guy with some starting experience. I don't know who that player is. Uh, I, I've got to be honest with you. I don't think a lot of Phillies fans knew who Colby Allard was or knew that he existed before the Philadelphia Phillies signed him yesterday. And uh, i got to be honest with you. I don't know who the guy is. I had to do some research to even figure out how he throws, what he does, where he was drafted, all of this stuff. So it could be another no-name guy. Depth is important. You never know when you're going to find the next Jeff Hoffman. And I'm not saying that that's a prudent way to attack building a team, but I'm just saying like these guys aren't immediate throwaways just because you don't know their names. And they're also not being asked to do all that much. So the Phillies still need to add a couple guys to the bullpen and a couple guys to the organization with minor league optionality that can potentially start in the future. That's exactly what Colby Allard is. But they also need to add an outfield depth piece still. And I think they're going to do that. I just don't think the market has settled yet. So Keep an eye on pitchers still. I think that's going to be the next move or maybe next couple of moves for the Philadelphia Phillies and the fact that they've done something. Well, who knows? Could come soon. Could find out later this week that they go ahead and add a guy. So uh, I'll keep you updated on all the breaking news. Obviously, you'll get all that here on Locked on Phillies, and we'll break it down in our daily episodes. But that's your thought process on where the Phillies go next, according to yours truly. Let me know in the comments if you think I'm right or if you'd rather see them do something differently. And also, give some love to Reese Hoskins if you get a chance on social media or anything like that, Instagram, Twitter, whatever way uh, you follow him. Tell him thank you. He deserves to hear it because he did a lot for this city, and it's a shame to see him go. Uh, sad to see Reese Hoskins end his time with the Philadelphia Phillies by signing with the Brewers, but reality of a professional sport and a couple of years here with Reese Hoskins that a lot of us will never forget, especially the bat spike. That's all for today's episode of Locked on Phillies. Thank you so much for checking us out. Please make sure, again, you're rating, reviewing, subscribing to the YouTube, all that great stuff. We are part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And I'll talk to you next time on the next episode of Locked on Phillies.